Well, I, I think, you know, congratulations has, has to be given to our, our coaching staff and our players in the sense when you play a game like this against a team that has a lot of, a lot of firepower in the sense that 19 returning players, and uh, they're historically one of those better teams in college football. How do you react? And I thought our guys acted pretty good, to be quite honest. Going into this, uh, I knew this wasn't going to be a high scoring affair. I just felt like it first, to, first to ten might win. And uh, with that being said, I, I thought our guys did a nice job of when things didn't go well, we didn't panic. Uh, we just kept fighting and just kept playing football. And I told them at halftime, I said, if, if I'd have told you this was a score at halftime, would you have taken it? And they all looked and I said, well, okay, that's the score. I said, we got a second half. I said. Our stamina and our resolve will, will wear them down a little bit. We got we to gotta bet on that. And I thought for the most part it did. Um, when we got into that last five minutes, it's something we, we do a lot around here, uh, situation football. Uh, got in the, down there when the offense had the ball, I said, this is it. They should never get the ball back. The game should end now. And how you want it to end is how it's going to end. thought they did a good job at the end there, um, knowing that when they ran out of timeouts, it was just for us to get the ball in the middle of the field and kick a field goal. Um, and we practiced stuff like that. I, mean, we, we, I show them that. I mean, we, you know, so they were well aware of the situation. Um, it's a credit to our defense, uh, just <coughs> hammering away. And you know, we gave up one big pass. Uh, did a great job in the red zone of intercepting the ball uh, to keep the game within a score. And then the offense. We have good enough players that will make plays eventually. And one's going to make a play. I mean, you can cover him for a while, but he's going to make a play. And you know that in games like this, the magnitude of games like this, the big players want to make a play. And he made one, and Manny made one. It was, it was sloppy. It was a sloppy game. It wasn't one. It wasn't a, this, was a, this was an old-time pro football game. This wasn't a college game. College games generally get into the 40s and the 50s. and there's everybody's, This was just a rock'em, sock'em game. It was, it was comfortable for me. You know, I'm used to being in games like this. Yeah, so... I just thought we kept our poise at the end and we were able to get, you know, get a good win for our fan base. And it was, it was magnificent out there. Uh, the fans were into the game, the whole game. Uh, and it had to be because it was a tight game. It never got out of hand for the, any opponent, so either side of it. So I'm happy for our football team and the coaches. Coach, uh, yes, ma'am. congratulations. Uh, heading into the season, the defense obviously was the biggest question mark. So far, they've held two teams to 20 points. What kind of testament would you say to what they've been able to do, especially against, you said, the big boy pads? Well, that's why you hired Danny Gonzalez. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 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 and Tony White. And, and so, you know, I think they, they've really done a marvelous job when you think about 27 players played defense last week. Probably 25 played this week. A lot of young guys, freshmen, first-year guys, whatever, new guys on the defense. And we're not where we're going to be yet, and, and Danny will tell you that. But I think we're, we're starting to develop a, a temperament, uh, which is good. I mean, this was, a, this was one of those games defensively where you had to tackle big backs, big running backs, big people. And uh, at times we missed a few. You know, they bounced off us. But I think for the most part to, uh, to hold them to the points. You know, points are always a critical part in football. At the end of the day, you can look at all that other stuff. I learned this lesson when I was with the Buccaneers, the coaching. We won a lot of games, nine to three. And if they can't score, they can't win. And so when you keep the points down, you're going to be in a football game. How big was that pick? Huge. It was, it was huge. A red zone defense. It's, it's, it's something that, um, you know, that takes points off the boards. Uh, that takes the momentum out. Of, you know, all of a sudden they get that touchdown down there. Now we're really, it's a different football game. But it was one of those games, you know, when we moved it, they made good defensive plays as well. So it was a game, really, a couple big plays here and there, but defensively kept the score down and just felt like whoever had the ball at the end had a chance to win when it was tied up. We were fortunate enough to get the ball back, and the offense did a fabulous job of five minutes going down and at the end kick a field goal for a second. Coach, to, to piggyback off that, I mean, like you said, I mean, it was tough for both teams to run the ball, but it seemed like as the game went on, those screen passes to Eno, Manny hitting them. How big was Eno's performance on those, on those places, on the screens especially? Huge. And early in the game, um, our plan a little bit offensively was to try to run them, 
was try to run them and, and, and wear them down with those screens and things. And they did a great job of defending it, and we couldn't get anything going. Um, so we had to change our plan in the second half, and Coach Likens was able to do that. Uh, but we felt like uh, going into the middle of the third quarter, fatigue was a little bit of a factor. I sensed it at halftime when they took a knee uh, and then called timeout. And it was because they wanted more. They wanted, they, they wanted to extend the game because they were tired. And so I told our team that. I said, hey, that's why they took the knee, guys. I said, and they called timeout after that. I said, they didn't want to go in yet. They wanted another 40 seconds because it's a smart job by the coach, you know, to give them a little bit more time. So I thought, with that being said, we just needed to keep our poise the second half. And for the most part, we did. I thought they had a lot of penalties the second half. And sometimes penalties are due to fatigue. That's just a common common factor in football. When you're tired, you grab, you hold, you know, you just, and then they were a little bit fatigued. And you know, it's tough, because look, the second half, these guys are playing at what, 11.30 at night? That's hard. So we needed to use that to our advantage. I told those guys in the locker room, say, guys, it's 12.30 right now. They got to play second half football. That's hard for people to do. That's, that's so those are the things that kind of helped us as well. Herm, can you walk us through that final series? Uh, any thoughts of trying to get into the end zone? Or no. Did you know? Why? How many games are lost us? doing that? That silliness? No. No, 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 no. We were, we were, we were in good shape. They, they ran out of timeouts, and I, when they ran out of timeouts, I said, guys, all we got to do is handle the ball. Don't try to be hero ball. We don't need to run. You worry about them letting you score. And I told them that we're not going to score. They let you score, don't score. Go down on the one-yard line. We're going to take this clock all the way down and kick field goal. Did you say you practiced that scenario during yeah, the week, we too? Practiced, yeah. We practiced it. I mean, I show it on tape. I mean, I, I show different scenarios every, every day we go through a scenario. And that was one that was proposed. That one, that one came up in a game, actually. Came up in a college football game, that same scenario. And they messed around and lost the game because they didn't manage the clock correctly. And there's a lot of that happening, and you've got to be able to do that. And our players understand that now. They have a sense of we're going, to go these, we're going to do three or four scenarios today. We do it every week. We do it with the whole team. We, I put it up on the, on the monitor. We go through it, take the tape, click it, say, here's the time in the game. Here's what they should have done. They didn't do that. When we get in this situation, we're going to do this. We got in that situation. And they, they uh, knew what to do. Manny knew what to do because he came out. He was going, milk it, milk it. Yes, milk the clock. Don't hike it until four seconds. Let the 40-second clock run all the way down. You know, everybody was worried about we're going to get a delay. We weren't going to get a delay. We should try to take time off the clock. I mean, that's what you do. You win a football game. Jeff, and then pass it back to Chris. Right. Yes, yes, When um, you came out with the four wide receivers at the beginning of the third quarter there, and then they had to call timeout, can you just uh, discuss that a little? And then also the fact that Brandon kicked that 49-yard field goal the first time he was out there. Um, how much do you think that helped him? And well, yeah, it did. And, 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 I, and, you know, we knew going into this that points were going to be very difficult to, to, to get, and we wanted to get him in shape. And that's hard coming out 49-49 yarder. But he's been kicking it good all week. We felt really good about him all week. And, you know, we ran through scenarios this week, put him in some situations too, uh, running, the, running the kicker out there with 13 seconds left, knowing we could get a kick off. So we, we, we spot him certain areas. We do that with the, with the field goal team. As well, the four wide receivers were something we had in our arsenal, which is a matter of when we're going to break it out. And uh, we were able to do that the second half and got a couple plays. We, we hit a couple fades on. They got a good defense. Those, those corners played fairly well. They, they really did a nice job for the most part defending some things. So Frank had one, and the guy made a, a great strip on him over there on the boundary. Um, but uh, it was a defensive game. That's what it was. And, and most fans don't like watching that. I, I kind of like it. I just. I'm in my comfort zone, you know, I just kind of go, okay, it's going to be that way, and we just have to wait till the fourth quarter, and hopefully if we have the ball at the end, we'll have a chance to win, and it worked out well for us. Herm, you, you spoke all week about your respect for Michigan State's program, mm -hmm. the way that they conduct their business, and yeah. just being a blue blood of, of college football. So I know we're just two games into this thing, but what, in that framework, what does, what does a win like this do for where this program is at right now? Well, I, I think it helps, it helps us as a coaching staff um, to, when you speak to the players, winning always justifies what you do, right? 
I mean, when you practice a little bit different than everybody and you do other things, people question that, you know, and sometimes players question it. But when you win, they continue to buy in. And uh, I think by now, I've been here since December, I think these players trust me. I have their best interests in mind. It's always about them. It'll always be about them. And when I ask them to do things, they don't, uh, they don't question it. They just, you know, it's kind of like me. I live by fate, not by sight. And they know if I tell them something, then that's what we're going to do. And they, 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 they're all in. They don't, Coach Herm said it, we're good. And, but it, it took me from December, you know, six months to show them that I'm this guy and this, that's how I operate and I'm going to be consistent every day to you and I'm always going to tell you the truth. And um, they trust me. But I needed to earn that. You know, that's, that's earned. It ain't given, it's earned. And I, I think they, the more you win, the more they go, okay, if Coach says we're doing that, that's what we're doing. If Coach says we're not going to go in the bubble and practice anymore, then we're not going in the bubble and practice anymore. We practiced in the bubble one time. That's it. And I told them when I got here, I said, we're not going in the bubble. You only go in the bubble if you're hurt. We're not going in that bubble anymore, guys. We're going to practice outside. And now they, they look at me now and go, Coach, we don't want to go in the bubble. We never ever want to go in there. I said, good, because we ain't going in there anyway. <laughs> but really, I mean, that was a big deal with me. I mean, everyone told me when I got here, it's like, hey, you got, it's too hot. You can't practice. You have to go in the bubble, I said. You guys go, where? It's in the bubble. I said, no, 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 no. We practice outside. We play outside. And to their credit, they don't want to go in there. It's like, coach, you told us we don't go in there. I said, that's right. We don't go in there. And they go outside. We went in there one time for the, was that mud storm or the sand storm? What do they call that thing? Dirty storm, whatever they call it. <laughs> we went in there one time and that was it. Abu. The boo, whatever it is. <laughs> they all got some different weather down here. Coach, yes, ma'am. You said at the very end of training camp that two games into this, you were going to know what your team needed to fix and where they were at. So before looking at film, before all that, where do you think they're at right now? Still struggling putting drives together on offense. Uh, defensively, uh, and Danny would say this, not very good on, on third downs. We let guys off the hook too many times, to two games in a row. Penalties were a little bit better, um, but we got to get more consistent. There's a lot. Look, we got a lot of work to do. We really do. We're nowhere near my expectations. Nowhere near them. I mean, we, we've got a lot of work to do still here. And uh, it's fun when you win because that helps you. It helps you put another brick on the, on the pile of bricks, you know, and, and knowing that we're trying to build something. And it takes a lot of hard work. And to these players' credit, especially defensively, um, with so many young guys and so many different guys playing, um, they did a pretty good job. They've done a pretty good job the last two weeks. So we'll see. See what happens. Hey, Coach. Yes, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. You, got, you guys got two crucial sacks yeah. in that game at the perfect time. Were you guys saving the blitz for that? No, we, we, we got, you know, the quarterback was pretty good. We, we, we flushed him out a couple times, but he, he had the ability when we got the edge on him, we ran past him. And so when you run past the quarterback, he can duck back underneath. That's how he got out the last couple times. But... Um, we saw some things that we felt like if they gave us a certain formation, we could come off the edge and get him. And um, these guys have done a pretty good job of, of harassing the quarterbacks in the last two games. So uh, that's the castle. You know, the quarterback lives in the castle. When you can storm the castle and hit him, they don't like that. And it's, it's, when you do that, you, you, you make their offense change. And they did a good job of rolling him out. You know, when they, they, when they felt the pressure, they did a nice job of adjusting to us and really rolling outside and, and getting him on the, on the edge a little bit where he's really good. He's a good quarterback and he's on the edge. He can, he can throw the ball fairly well on the edge. So uh, they, did, they did some things, but I thought our defense for the most part, you give up 13 points, um, it's a shame. You know, you got the one, one kid one-on-one, -on -one, somebody's got to make a play. Their guy did, just like Nikhil makes one for us. So it just kind of balances off. Herm, as you came off the field, you kind of huddled up with Ray and Michael Crow. Can you just share what that conversation was like? Uh, you're asking me almost like when I talk to my wife after a game. No, you <laughs> cannot. <laughs> Private matter. Private matter. <laughs> it's between three guys just talking. All right. Good. Good. All right. Thanks, everybody.